How are you guys doing? Today is Sunday, October 17th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Jamal Adams. The elite strong safety for the Seattle Seahawks turns 26 today, and my intention with this episode is, of course, to shed light on everything that Jamal Adams has been able to accomplish from the moment that he stepped onto the field with the LSU Tigers as a teenager to where he is now actually playing a very important role for at least a team that should compete for NFL titles for uh, the years to come. He is a very good player in a very good position, and there is a reason why he's actually here. If you're unfamiliar with Jamal Adams, he stands in at about six foot one, two hundred thirteen pounds. And the way I would I, I would best compare his game, or I guess like his 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 skill set, really to Troy Polamalu, I think is really the closest player to Troy Palomalu that I've really kind of seen. He's a very aggressive, attack-minded strong safety. If you ever see defensive schemes, you see the, the strong safety that plays as the extra player in the box in terms of rushing the quarterback, but at the same time, he does know how to play the safety position. He can definitely cover players in front of him, but Jamal Adams is where he is. He is an elite defender because he is probably one of the best tacklers, one of the best open field defenders that I've ever seen in the sport. And just to take a bit of a, just to give a little bit of background, just to, just so you know where he's coming from, he was born in Louisville, Texas, and he ended up playing high school in Carrollton, Texas, if you know how big high school Texas is out there. Jamal Adams is a product of Texas high school football. He would eventually go on to get scouted to go play at LSU as a five-star prospect, because of course, not everyone plays for LSU. This dude, as a freshman at LSU, would go on to start every single game that he played. So, I mean, which would go on to say he started every he started 12 games every single year that he played at LSU. In 2014, as a freshman, he started 12 of the games he played, or all 12 of the games he played in a season where the LSU Tigers finished unranked. They would end up losing in the Music City Bowl this year to Notre Dame, but in the season itself... Jamal Adams would finish with 66 tackles on the 12 game season, five tackles for loss. He was also able to add a sack as well as, of course, LSU wasn't necessarily ranked, but to still be a starter, a consistent starter with LSU's team, it shows the type of player that he was. Following his first season, Jamal Adams would eventually come back to LSU for his sophomore season. And in his sophomore season, he would go on to play 12 games in a season where the Tigers would finish with a 9-3 and record. And of course, in his age 20 season, Jamal Adams would go on to finished with 67 tackles on the season. He finished with five and a half tackles for loss, which is roughly what he did before. He did not register a sack this year, but he registered four interceptions. He had five in his entire collegiate career. So the fact that he had four in that one year, that was the stat that turned a lot of people's heads. He did go on to force a fumble and recover a fumble, the first forced and recovered fumble he'd ever have in his collegiate career career the only or the first ones he died for for both and in 2015 he will go on to make the second team all sec as lsu would finish up that season like i said they would end up beating texas tech in the raider or in the texas bowl i believe patrick mahomes what was on that team but of course i digress Following Jamal Adams' second season in which he established himself as a second team SEC level safety, he will come back to LSU for his junior season, which of course will be his last year of college eligibility. In his age 21 season, Jamal Adams would play 12 games for a LSU team that finished with an 8 and 4 record. They finished with the they finished as the top 15 team in the nation, the highest ranking they'd get. This was the season where Ed Orgeron full where, where he came in taking in for take over for Les Miles. This year they would end up beating Louisville in the Citrus Bowl just to get a sense of of what they were playing. This is when Lamar Jackson was on Louisville, by the way. So Jamal Adams had to play against Lamar Jackson in that, in that college game. 
In his junior season, Jamal Adams would finish with 76 tackles on the 12-game season, seven and a half tackles for loss, which is the most he'd ever put up in a season. He put up a sack, which is tied with his freshman season for the most he's ever put up in a year. He finished with an interception, a fumble, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. All of that combined with him leading LSU to being a top team in, to at least a top 15 team in the nation, led to him being taken with the number six overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. Um, notable names ahead of him include Miles Garrett, or he was the only player among the elite that was taken ahead of him. Other players in that round, notable ones, include Christian McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes, uh, who were taken in the top 10. Marshawn Lattimore, Deshaun Watson, and Marlon Humphrey were taken in the top 20. Tredavious White and TJ Watt, and also Ryan Ramchek, the tackle for the New Orleans Saints, would also be taken in the first round of this draft. The next top or the, the next safety that was taken in this draft was Malik Hooker from Indianapolis then Jabril Pepper for the he was taken by the Cleveland Browns and then Buda Baker was the next safety taken so just to give a sense of the competition of who came in with Jamal Adams in 2017 but he was taken with the sixth overall pick by the New York Jets which is where he played his first three seasons and taking a look at how he fared when he first got there uh, he would go on to play his age 22 season in 2017, and in this season, he would start all 16 of the games he played in a season where the Jets would go on to finish with a 5-11 and record. This was Todd Bowles' third season of four while he was coaching with New York. Even though they wouldn't make the playoffs, Jamal Adams would go on to finish with 83 combined tackles on the season, nine tackles for loss, six defended passes, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. And even though the Jets didn't necessarily make the playoffs, Jamal Adams was named to the all-rookie team, so many people were aware that at least, even though the Jets were terrible, Jamal Adams wasn't the reason that they were terrible. This would lead into Jamal Adams' second season with the New York Jets. In his age 23 season in 2018, he would start all 16 games for the second year in a row in a season where the Jets would finish with a 4-12 and record and Todd Bowles' fourth and final season coaching the Jets. And his second season starting as the strong safety for the Jets, Jamal Adams would finish with 115 combined tackles on the season. That is the most tackles he's ever put together in a season. He has not done... He has not put together a season anything like that since. In his second year in the NFL, he would finish with three and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, which would be his, which is his career high to date. And he also finished with a fumble recovery. He also would log his very first interception of his NFL career as well. In 2018, even though the Jets would not make the playoffs, Jamal Adams was named a Pro Bowler, and he was named to the second team All-Pro as he was recognized by his peers as being the second best strong safety in the NFL. Following his very first Pro Bowl season in which he's shown that he was the best, one of the best defensive players for the Jets, for the, for the NFL while being a member of the Jets, he would return to the Jets for his third and final season as a member. In 2019, in his age 24 season, Jamal Adams would start all 14 of the games that he played in a season where the Jets would finish with a 7-9 and record in Adam Gase's first season. This was right before the pandemic hit. And in this season, Jamal Adams would finish with 75 combined tackles in the 14 games he played. He finished with a, or I guess he finished with six and a half sacks, which at that point was a career high. He would go on to finish with 10 tackles for a loss. The first time he finished with double digit tackles for a loss. He would finish with an interception, his only interception of 2019. Well, I, I guess John, Jamal Adams, only interception of 2019 will go on to be an interception, a pick six. He would also go on to finish with an, an ankle injury, but regardless, he like I said, he would go off to record his very first pick six uh, in their week three matchup against the New England Patriots off of rookie quarterback Jared Stidham. 
Um, but following that match, uh, or in addition to that, you would also go on to force and recover a fumble 25 yards for a touchdown. That's his only fumble recovery touchdown. In 2019, even though the Jets would not make the playoffs in his very final season being there, Jamal Adams would go on to be named a Pro Bowler for the second year in his career. He was named to the first team All-Pro for the only time in his career to date. And like I said, he would go on to be he would go on to be at least known at least following 2019 as the best strong safety in football. Following the 2019 season, however, he would eventually get traded along with the fourth round pick of the 2022 NFL draft to the Seattle Seahawks in exchange for Bradley McDougald and then first and third picks in the 2021 NFL draft. And once he made it to the Seahawks, it would be a little bit diff- it would be a little bit difficult for him to stay on the field, but regardless, he was able to do so. In 2020, uh, in Jamal Adams's age 25 season, his fourth year in the NFL, in his very first season with the Seattle Seahawks, he would go on to play 12 games in a season where the Seattle Seahawks would go on to finish with a 12 and 4 record to finish the season. He's only played one full season with the Seattle Seahawks. In that season he's only played 12 games as he had to deal with a couple of injuries. But looking at the season itself, he would go on to help the Seahawks, like I said, finish with a 12 and 4 record, making the playoffs for the third year in a row. Uh in this season, Jamal Adams and the he would finish with 83 tackles in the 12 games he played. He finished with nine and a half sacks, which is a single season record for a defensive back in an NFL season. He would finish with 11 tackles for losses, tackles for loss, and he'd finish with three passes defended. He would be named a Pro Bowler for the third time in his career, and he would also get named a Pro Bowler alongside Quandre Diggs. They'll be the first safety tandem to make the Pro Bowl together since Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor did it for the Seahawks in 2015. Uh, But like I said, at the conclusion of the season, Jamal Adams was named a Pro Bowler and second team all pro for the second time in his NFL career, the third time in his career he's ever made an NFL all pro team. And then at the conclusion of the season, the Seahawks would go to the playoffs and end up losing to the Rams in the wild card round. This is the year where Russell Wilson won the Walter Payton Man of the Year, just for a little bit of context. And then following that season, that was the last we saw of Jamal Adams going, or that was prior to going into this season. As of right now, Jamal Adams is, of course, in his age 26 season as he has turned 26 this year, looking, what he's, looking at what he's done so far. He started six games for a Seattle Seahawks team. That at the moment is currently sitting and holding the worst record in the NFC West. They're sitting at two and four at the moment as they're four games behind the Arizona Cardinals. Thus far this season, Jamal Adams is sitting on 43 tackles, three tackles for a loss, and he's also defended a pass. Still has yet to record a sack, a forced fumble, fumble recovery, even an interception. But of course, he was but Jamal Adams doing what you virtually expect of him. Uh, I mean, he has a lot to really get back on in terms of this year, but in terms of making the tackles, he's doing what is need to be done. And he is proving that he is at least worthy, uh, or at least he's one of the reasons why the Seattle Seahawks were a playoff team last year. And he very well could be the catalyst in a playoff push for the Seattle Seahawks this year. Jamal Adams is one of the best saves, one of the best safeties in football. And considering he's only been in the league, this is only his fifth year in the league. And he's continually showing that he that he can consistently be one of the best safeties in football. It makes me very... And I, it makes me very hopeful looking at what his career most definitely could become now that he's actually on a team that can make the playoffs. I want to thank the pro football and college football reference websites for giving me the facts and figures that I needed. Of course, 
and I want to thank the NFL websites. I want to, of course, take this time to wish Jamal Adams a happy 26th birthday if you ever get a chance to watch him. He's wearing number 33 with the Seattle Seahawks. And of course, I want to thank everyone for listening to all 14, 15 minutes of this piece. I really hope all is well. Once all, and with that said, once everything is done today, I will come back tomorrow on October 17th for another episode of, or I'm sorry, October 18th for another episode of The Elite. And until then, I'll thank, I want to thank everyone for listening to my piece. I hope all is well, and I will catch you with another episode tomorrow. Peace out.